HIT has amazing body composition benefits, but here's four benefits of doing high intensity interval training three times per week that you didn't know about and well, that no one else is talking about. We know that HIT has a powerful effect on body composition, all right? It's powerful. You burn more calories after a HIT workout, which allows you to boost your metabolism throughout the course of the day. Okay, first a quick breakdown on how to properly do HIT, and then I'll jump right into this. HIT is not what you might think, right? The idea behind HIT is high intensity bursts with as much recovery as you need in order to do the next burst effectively. What that means is you could literally be doing like 20, 30 seconds all out high intensity. And if you have to recover for two minutes in order to have an effective follow up set, that's fine. Take as much time as you need within reason. The idea is getting a high intensity interval not continuous heart rate, okay? It's supposed to look like this, not like this, okay? Hey, after this video, please check out down below in the description, Kettle and Fire, okay? They are a bone broth company, but if you're doing any kind of intermittent fasting or you're doing any kind of dietary pattern that you might need to supplement a little bit with bone broth, they are the ones to follow, okay? So there's a link down below so you can save a few bucks and try some of their different bone broths. They have regular bone broth, they have bone broth soups, they have flavored bone broths, and they are really the ones that paved the way for bone broth as far as the mainstream goes. They've coupled it with apple cider vinegar so you get better mineralization. Plus, they're just an awesome company and they've supported this channel from the OG days. So they are truly an awesome, supportive company. So make sure you check them out down below in the description. Get your hands on Kettle and Fire using the code down below and save a few bucks and get some delivered to your doorstep. Now let's talk HIT. The first benefit that I want to talk about is one that isn't addressed properly and it legitimately has an effect on longevity. There was a study that was published in the journal Physiology that took a look at a number of things but one of the sort of side effects of this study is they found that high intensity interval training over just a short amount of time increased what is called sirtuin 1 which is the longevity gene by like 56%. A 56% increase in sirtuin 1 is what you would see if you were doing like an extended fast. I'm not saying that you can do HIT in replacement of an extended fast, but we, we hear about the benefits of fasting for longevity and all this and that, like longer term, like we see all kinds of cultures do it. But what we don't hear is that, wow, just doing HIT a few times per week can have this huge increase in sirtuins. So ultimately what sirtuins do is they go and they send a message to other areas of the body to recover. Okay, mitochondrial biogenesis, allowing our cells to literally get better at using energy, which is like everything we're looking for as we age, okay? Now let's move into the next one. High intensity interval training a few times per week can help absolve you of the negative effects of poor sleep. Okay, now, this doesn't mean that you can have cruddy sleep for the rest of your life, but there was an interesting study that was published in the journal Molecular Metabolism that found that when subjects were sleep deprived, if they just did a little bit of HIT training, it made it so that their glucose tolerance was back to normal. It made it so that they could process carbs in a normal fashion. They made it so that they were more insulin sensitive. They made it so they had better mitochondrial respiration, which means their cells used energy better. And they had better sarcoplasmic protein synthesis. What that means is their cells actually recovered and used protein the right way. This is important because normally when we're sleep deprived, if we get like four hours of sleep, our body does not metabolize carbohydrates well. Our body does not metabolize fats well. And we end up running the risk of storing fat a lot easier and having negative metabolic effects. So this study demonstrated that, well, believe it or not, if you can stomach it and you can get that mental fortitude to do a little bit of HIT training on the day that you are sleep deprived, well, you can actually erase, at least get a get out of jail free card a couple times per week for poor sleep if you can just do like 10 rounds of 60 second high intensity interval training. It's that simple. The next benefit is it changes how your body uses glucose and is more effective at burning carbohydrates than some other kind of training. Now, it's not the basic way that you might know. Okay, I have a little bit more of an explanation based on some research. The Journal of Medicine, Science, and Sports and Exercise had published a study. It took a look at people that didn't have good glucose tolerance. Like they had defective glu they couldn't process carbs right. It's like when they took in sugar, their blood sugar would go up. It was dysregulated, like a big problem, right? That could be from sleep deprivation, could be from age, could be from disease, whatever. Okay, but they found when compared to healthy people, if they both did high intensity interval training, they both got the same positive result. But if both groups did regular exercise and not high intensity interval training, only the healthy group got a result. 
That's pretty wild, right? So basically, if you're sleep deprived or if you're glucose intolerant or you're just not processing carbs well, maybe you're just someone that's like, I, don't, I just don't do well with carbs. When I have carbs, I get bloated. I feel fat. I feel like I put on weight when I have carbs. There's a lot of people out there and they talk about that, right? The point is, is if you're one of those people, doing HIT could potentially kind of reverse that a little bit. And it has to do with the fact that it's allowing glucose to be used at a faster rate and it's developing a pathway for glucose to be used better. So basically, when you're doing high intensity interval training, you're tensing up so much of your body that the cells within your muscles throughout your entire body have no choice but to soak up glucose without insulin even being present. And what that simply means is that when you're done with your workout, your body has now developed a pathway and it's sort of learned to use glucose better. So you can train your body to be better at using carbs and have less potential risk with those carbohydrates by doing just a little bit of hit, just two to three times per week. Again, like seven to 10 rounds of 60 seconds with 75-ish or so seconds off. That is intriguing. The next one has to do with mitochondrial biogenesis, which sounds like a super boring thing, but let me give you sort of a more colloquial way of explaining this, like what this really means. It basically means your mitochondria is going to be better at utilizing fat for fuel. That's flat out what it is. Okay, the same study that took a look at how it affects uh, the sirtuins and the longevity was actually originally setting out to investigate this. So this study was published in the journal Physiology, and it took a look at doing six high intensity interval training sessions over the course of two weeks. Okay, and that's not very much, but they found that doing those six HIIT training sessions over two weeks can elicit the same benefits in terms of aerobic capacity as doing two weeks of endurance training. That's pretty, I don't know, I'll take the hit over that, right? Now, from a biochemistry standpoint, the reason that this occurred is because it had an increase in cytochrome C oxidase by 29%. That's an enzyme that has to do with, well, the mitochondria using energy. It's very important in that electron transport chain and cellular respiration. It's a different story for a different day. But then there was a 24% increase in what is called PGC1A. And before you turn off this video, because I'm going down acronym land, let me just give you a brief synopsis of what it is. PGC1A is like the master switch to turn on mitochondria getting stronger. That's it, okay? It improves mitochondrial mass. It's sort of a genetic flip switch that's flipped and makes the mitochondria process better. The more mitochondrial mass that we have, the more mitochondrial density, and the more mitochondrial biogenesis we have, the more factories we have to burn fat. So when we create more mitochondrial mass, we create more factories to burn fat. So that is really kind of a genetic way that high intensity interval training allows you to burn fat at a better rate over the long haul, not just because it boosts your metabolism for the day. I mean, yes, that's great. Don't get me wrong. I'll take that all day long, but I want the genetic effect. I want what's changing me from the inside out. And we're seeing that we are rewarded for doing short bursts of hard things. Okay. We don't have to just, you know, when we travel, we're stressed out, we're exhausted. What do we default to? I might just go for a jog around the resort, or I might just go do some cardio. Why? Because it's easy and you know it's easy and it doesn't require a lot of mental fortitude. Come on, don't lie to yourself. But if you go out and you do something intense and difficult, you're going to get rewarded for it. And the genetics show it, the research shows it, the mitochondrial efficiency shows it, and your body's gonna show it. I'll see you tomorrow.